Hello everybody, my name is Jay. I'm one of the expert OET teachers here at E2 Language. What I'm going to do in this live class is talk to you about OET writing and I'm going to talk to you about scoring, how you're scored in the OET. I'm gonna take you through the criteria. So if you've received your grade recently and you're disappointed and you need to take the OET again, or if you're about to take the OET and you need to get an A or a B, this video is going to be appropriate for you. So let's get started. This is OET writing scoring. So here is the new scoring system. You can see there OET 2.0. You can see that the old scoring system was A, B, C plus C, D, E. The new scoring system goes from 500 down to zero. And you can compare it to the IELTS equivalent here. So let's go through an A. What's an A? So an old A is now 450 to 500, which is the equivalent of an IELTS 8 or 9. This is a very high level. Most of you will be aiming for a B. This is between 440 and 350. This is the equivalent of an IELTS 7 to 7.5. This is achievable. C+, maybe some of you are aiming for a C+. This is a score between 340 and 300, which is the equivalent of an IELTS 6.5, and anything below that you probably don't want, okay? That's the new scoring system, and this is how you're actually scored. These crazy things are called the criteria, and this is what the examiners use when they're grading your essays. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with those. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna break it up and I'm going to take, it, take you through it bit by bit so you'll understand it completely, okay? There's quite a few, so you'll have to stay with me and pay attention. Most of it you're probably going to do naturally, but you do wanna be conscious of all the little things that you need to do to boost your score. So let me take you through this in an easier way. So here are the criteria. We'll start with task fulfillment. This is the most important thing you do on test day, okay? So task fulfillment, the first part of that means that you completed the requirements of the task. So remember on test day, you have the case notes. At the bottom of the case notes, you have a task. The task will tell you several important things. It's going to tell you who you're writing to, the profession of the recipient, it's going to tell you the reason you're writing to them, and the type of letter you're writing. This is kind of like your essay prompt. Everything you write needs to be directed towards that task. As such, you need to be flexible right? You can't have a memorized response here because you don't know who you're writing to and why. So pay, pay careful attention to that task. Okay, 1B, your introduction that you write contains the main medical issue, the reason you're writing or and or the request, okay? Your introduction should contain these two, possibly three things. That's important. But again, remember, you need to be flexible. Maybe it won't, maybe it will. In most cases, it will. 1C, this is hugely important. You need to prioritize the most important information. Okay, so you've got all of these case notes and some of them are relevant to the recipient. And the ones that are relevant will have a priority of importance. Some of them will be really important and the reader needs to read them straight away. They should be at the top of the letter, right? Maybe it's the main medical issue, for example. What you don't want to do is bury the important priority in the middle or down the bottom of your letter. If it's important, bring it to the top of the letter. You need to prioritize it. This is critical. All right, 1D, you covered the treatment and discharge plan including a clear request. So also in the case notes, usually towards the end, there's going to be a treatment plan or a discharge plan that will give you some uh, task, some information that you need to include. For example, um, when the patient needs to follow up with the doctor or checking of the medication or when the home, curse, home care nurse needs to attend the patient, etc. What you need to do is synthesize and summarize this information and put it into a very clear request at the end of the letter. And you can't forget any of that important information 
from the treatment plan or from the discharge plan. Okay, next, 1E. You need to write an appropriate number of words. And the OET are not too strict on this. It's different to the IELTS. They say approximately, let's say 220 words in total, including the address. What they say is it's approximate because it does depend on the case notes. It does depend on the task. There's no real set number of words, but in saying that, if you're writing under say 200 words in total, you're probably leaving out important information. And if you're writing more than 220 words in total, you're probably including a lot of irrelevant case notes that the recipient, the reader, doesn't need to know about. Cool, so these criteria for task fulfillment are the most important. These are weighted more heavily than the other criteria. But let's have a look at the next one. This is also very important, understanding of case notes. So there's just two here. First one is that you interpret the case notes correctly. Let me tell you a funny little story. So I had one nurse and I was correcting her writing, giving her some live corrective feedback in the tutorial. And she had mistaken the word ambulate for the word amputate, okay? This is a massive error she would have lost a huge number of points for making a critical error of misinterpreting the case notes. She thought the patient needed to get his foot amputated. In fact, the patient had a sore foot and he couldn't ambulate. So he needed a wheelie walker or something, okay? This is an example of a misinterpretation of a case note. Be very careful in the five minutes reading time, make sure you understand what you're reading. You may need to use the subtitles to help you, the main medical issue, uh, the admission diagnosis, whatever it is, okay? 2B for understanding of case notes. This is also critical. You need to select only relevant case notes according to the task and the recipient. So let's say, let's just say for argument's sake, there are 100 case notes. There won't be that many, for, but for argument's sake. So there's 100 case notes maybe only about 60 will be relevant to the reader. So you need to exclude or ignore a lot of the case notes because maybe they're case notes that happened a long time ago in the past medical history, they're not relevant now. Maybe there are a lot of case notes relating to something uh, that the physiotherapist doesn't need to know about uh, or vice versa, maybe you're writing um, to a doctor and the doctor needs to know but the physio doesn't. So again, it depends on the task, it depends on who you're writing to, and you need to keep that reader in mind. Put yourself in the shoes of the recipient. What do you need to know, okay, from that set of case notes? So selection's really important. Cool, all right. Third one, appropriateness of language. Okay, there are a few here, let me take you through them. First one. You need to transform the case notes into your own words. This doesn't mean that you need to change everything from the case notes because some of the words and phrases you can take directly and put into your writing. That's fine, into your letter. But some of them will be short abbreviations or there'll be sentences that don't quite make sense. So you need to make sure that they make grammatical sense in your letter. What you might also need to do is combine several different case notes into a sentence. So you can think about summarizing case notes as well. But what you don't want to do is copy large chunks of the case notes directly into your letter without changing it somehow, okay? So keep that in mind. 3B, you used a range of sentence types to convey your ideas clearly. Okay, so you want to use some simple sentences, you want to use some compound sentences, you must, I'll say must, because it's, it's so likely that you're going to use passive sentences as well, okay? So think about this passive sentence, the medication was administered yesterday, okay? Nice passive sentence. Why did we use it? Because in the active sentence, you could say something like, the nurse administered the medication yesterday, but for the active sentence, the nurse is irrelevant, so we might make a passive sentence. 
Anyway, you need to use a range of different sentence types. So if you just write simple sentences, add some compound and passive. If you just write really long complex sentences, add some short simple sentences as well. 3C, you need to structure your letter overall in a logical way, okay? So you have your introductory paragraph, which then leads into your main medical issue paragraph, which then leads into other paragraphs uh, according to the task and the needs of the reader. 3D, you need to organize the information within your paragraphs logically. So you're gonna have an overall logical structure to your letter, but then within the paragraphs themselves, you also need to have logic. They need to flow and be sequential. Your ideas need to be sequenced in a way that makes sense. In a way, what you're doing with the overall structure and the paragraph structure is telling a story to the reader of the letter, okay? So think about it that way. It might help you to make more sense here. 3E, you should use some discourse markers but not too many and not too few. So discourse markers are words like in addition, moreover, furthermore, however, as a result. These are important to use and you should use them to help structure your writing, but don't overuse them and don't underuse them, okay? I don't know how many you should use, maybe four or five, five maximum, okay? More like about three or four though, I think would be an appropriate number of discourse markers. But again, it depends. Maybe you need to structure a particular paragraph using firstly, secondly, thirdly, etc. It all depends on test day. 3F, you need to use an appropriately formal tone, so not informal, not overly formal. Depends on who you're writing to, of course. You need to use salutations, dear doctor, and titles appropriately. So usually the title of the recipient will be in the case notes or in the task. So you're writing to Dr. Smith, right? So you copy that Dr. Smith. Maybe the patient is Mrs. Winston. So you copy that Mrs. Winston. The titles will be in the case notes. If you're writing about a child, then you will just use the child's first name, John or Paul or Sally, whatever it is, okay? You don't use uh, master. It's a bit old fashioned. Cool. Okay, you need to use medical abbreviations appropriately. So very common medical abbreviations like SOB for shortness of breath are fine because they're universally recognized. Be very careful in selecting which abbreviations you use. It's probably better not to use them if you're unsure. And again, it depends on who you're writing to, because if you're writing to the parent of a child, for example, then no medical abbreviations would be appropriate, okay? So it again, depends on the task and the recipient of the letter. Cool. Number four, grammar and vocabulary. So first of all, you gotta get your verb tenses right. So Mr. Smith has a headache, had a headache, is having headaches. Verb tenses convey information about when and how often. So you've got to get those right, especially in medical letters. You need to make sure you connect your subjects and verbs correctly. I'm not going to spend too much time explaining this stuff. Again, we talked about passive sentences. You should use passive sentences where appropriate. You need to get your articles right. Is it uh, the headache or a headache or headaches, etc. Singular and plural nouns. When do you put an S on the end to show more than one? And prepositions. If you do need help with any of your grammatical stuff, the best thing you can do is take a one-on-one -on -one tutorial with one of our expert teachers who will sit down with you for 45 minutes, go through your writing and show you what you're not doing correctly and what you need to do in order to do it correctly, okay? All right, last one, letter presentation. This one's pretty straightforward. 5A, you need to use correct letter format, including the address and the date. If you don't know what the correct letter format is, you can look at the model letters on e2language.com or you can check out the video lesson on correct letter format. Yeah, it's up to you to find out how to do that properly, but make sure you do that because that's an easy point to win. 5B, you need to put spaces between your paragraphs. So this is just letter format, remember. 
just put a gap between your paragraphs. You don't need to indent your paragraphs. It's not, you, you just don't need to do that. Last one, you need to use punctuation correctly. And this is a part of letter presentation, actually. So commas, full stops, capital letters, etc. Uh, this is complicated stuff. It's probably best taught in a tutorial. That actually, the best thing that you can do is to get feedback. So if you're unsure what you're doing right or what you're doing wrong, then you should submit your letter through E2 Language to one of our expert OET assessors who will go through and use the checklist that I just showed you and tell you what you're doing well, okay, and not well. Then you can begin to focus on the particular things you need to work on. And if you need additional writing help because maybe you're struggling, as I mentioned, our one-on-one -on -one tutorials with our expert teachers are very, very effective. Probably the quickest way that you can improve your writing. So, this is how the assessments work on E2 Language, by the way. So we've got the case notes there and you type up your response and you click submit. And within 48 hours, you will receive expert feedback from one of our teachers, including a full report card of all the criteria I just showed you. Cool. If you need more help, check out e2language.com. We're an OET premium preparation provider. I know I just showed you a lot of information, but that's how you're scored. If you need help, check out the website uh, and uh, make sure you do a lot of practice and get some feedback. See you soon.